Dear students, welcome to the third unit of uh, our subject, our course, Elements on Machine Design. Design of Machine Elements. Elements of Machine Design, correct, EMD. So, Unit 3, Design of Shafts, Keys and Couplings. So, this is very important uh, topic. This is a favorite for many people who ask, uh, um, you know, viva was questions or uh, competitive uh, exams. They will be asking many, many questions about shafts and keys and couplings. So, shaft, uh, you know, even in, uh, you know, in, uh, in even those people in, uh, who uh, will be asking you, uh, some interview questions they'll be interested in asking you sh about shafts okay let us see about the design of shafts a shaft is a rotating member usually circular cross section circular cross section that means in a, it is a cylindrical uh, piece okay and this can be solid or hollow the shaft can be solid or hollow and this transmits power and rotational motion okay see these machine elements like gears pulleys flywheels clutches sprockets these these things are mounted on the shafts okay and uh, these are used in the power transmission from uh, the driver to the driven okay see suppose electric motor is there and uh, the shaft of the electric motor is uh, uh, rotating that motion that power that is there in that uh, shaft should be transmitted to our machines shaft okay for this we use all these things like gears pulleys flywheels clutches sprockets etc everything all such things mounted on shafts okay then press fit keys dowel Pins, pins and splines are used to attach these machine elements on the shaft. Suppose if there is a gear, gear is mounted on the shaft. So, when the gear is rotating, the shaft also should be rotating. So, for this purpose, we may use key. Okay. So that when gear rotates, the key will rotate and the shaft will rotate. We will see how it everything works. The shaft rotates on roller contact bearings or bush bearings see shafts should be supported so i told you before also shafts normally are supported on two bearings on either side okay and uh, they can be roller contact bearings you know like a ball bearing or roller bearings or something like that see anti-friction bearings or uh, you know they can be bush bearings okay various types of retaining rings Thrust bearings, grooves, steps in the shafts are located to take up the actual load and locate the rotating element. Suppose if you provide a step, what will it do? It helps you to locate the element. That means you, know, you, should, you will know where exactly when you are you know, assembling the gear will come and sit. Okay, And it will take actual load also. You see, for these purposes, these steps and shafts, these grooves, these thrust bearings and retaining rings, such things are provided. Then couplings are provided. Couplings are used to transmit power from uh, the driver shaft to the driven shaft. Driver shaft is connected to the electric motor and or, or you know, it can be to uh, diesel engine, petrol engine or like that. Okay. And to the driven shaft or that is the, to the uh, you know, to the gearbox and something like that. Ah, you see here, the connecting shaft is loaded primarily in torsion. You see, the connecting shaft is shown here. This is the shaft. This shaft is supported on two bearings. One bearing here, another bearing here. Okay, and then there is an electric motor and electric motor shaft is here and there is a coupling here. What this coupling is doing is this shaft should be connected to this shaft of the electric motor should be connected to the uh, this shaft. Ah. 
why we are calling it connecting shaft because this is a machine and this is the motor okay and this is a shaft which is connecting coupling is on either side okay it is it need not be that there should be a connecting shaft directly our driver shaft and the driven shaft both can be connected also the shafts are usually cylindrical you see some people may say i will use a square cross section okay but you know such cases are very less it is always preferred the circular cross section that means you know cylindrical shafts are preferred but maybe of square or cross section uh, cross shaped in section they are solid in cross section but sometimes hollow shafts are also used there are some advantages with the hollow shafts that we will see later so these are the shafts there can be something called as a shaft can be an axle also you see what is an axle you see this axle is similar in shape to the shaft it looks like shaft only that means it is a cylindrical thing it is also supported in bearings okay but it is a stationary machine element now stationary machine element means what that will not be you know uh, taking up the torque or something so or it is not rotating you can say stationary machine element and it is used for transmission of bending moment only see these shafts shafts are normally they can bear both bending moment as well as twisting moment torque and bending moment both whereas here this takes only it is supporting uh, you know it is supporting the rotating bodies like a hoisting drum a car wheel or any pulley it can be supporting so such things are called as uh, axles okay so they may ask you to, to differentiate between shaft axle and spindle that's why we are saying this okay and then spindle spindle is a short shaft you see especially you now this imparts motion to a cutting tool so cutting tool means you know like uh, uh, in case of uh, lathe machine milling machine drilling machine and all these machines there are some things called spindles say upon which you know our um, either in case of lathe we put the the spindle will be holding the chuck and uh, the chuck will be holding the job okay whereas in uh, milling machine drilling machine and other things okay the spindle may be holding a tool okay so but this is a short shaft but this is spindle especially you know in cutting uh, in in uh, in uh, machine tools machine tools means all these big machines like lathe machine milling machine drilling machine shaper machine and uh, you know whatever all these things you know these are called machine tools so they have spindles and those spindles are a short shafts so they they are uh, uh short shafts these also experience uh, they can transmit both bending moment and uh, twisting moment okay so uh, that is the difference between these three so the materials used for shafts uh, they should have the following properties these are the ideal properties that the machine the, the shaft should have they should have high strength they should have good machinability machinability means you know it should be able to machine on uh, machine tools like a lathe machine or something if you are turning it if you are reducing the diameter it should be easy usually some things are very hard we cannot machine it machinability is less for some materials machinability will be more but our shafts should have good machinability and they should have low notch sensitivity factor because the most of the shafts are subjected to fatigue loading so notch sensitive factor should be low and it should have good heat treatment properties you see most of the shafts you know after they are made they are heat treated so they should be heat treatable thereby you know when they are soft you machine it and afterwards you heat treat it and then you know that machines will uh, become more strong and uh, they will be able to transmit uh, torque and bear uh, the stresses in a better way it should have high wear resistant properties wear resistance properties means like uh, you know uh, oh, see the gizna uh, wagare oh, so resistance against the scratch and other things you know these wear resisting properties uh, good hardness they, they should have the materials used for ordinary shafts are carbon steels carbon 40c8 40c8 means what carbon percentage is point uh, uh, 0.4 5 
45 c8 50 c4 uh, uh, 150 c12 like this these are the uh, carbon steels and apart from that you can have uh, you know uh, you can have other steels also like alloy steels and others you see where shaft of high strength is required then alloy steels such as nickel nickel chromium or chrome vanadium steels are are used so let us come to the manufacturing of shafts how shafts are manufactured they are manufactured by hot rolling and finished size by cold drawing or turning and grinding so these are the various uh, processes through which the shaft undergoes the cold rolled shafts are stronger than hot rolled shafts but cold rolled shafts may have high residual stresses hot rolled shafts will have no residual stresses okay residual stresses may cause distortion of the shafts that means you know that uh, the shaft may be a little twisted okay when it is machined especially when slots and keyways are cut then uh, you know the distortion may be seen shafts of larger diameter are usually forged forged means you know like in a furnace and like uh, the, see the uh, you know heating the material uh, and then you no know, forging with the help of forging uh, uh, forging machines okay and turn to size on lathe if it is a big big shaft big means large diameter shaft you see some shafts may have good big diameter like 50 you know, 200 mm from 300 mm 500 mm oh like that some can be even big you know big applications may require big large diameter shafts and such things you know they cannot they will not be done on rolling they should be done by forging now let us see the types of shafts see there are uh, two types of uh, shafts here uh, transmission shafts and machine shafts transmission shaft means the name itself is showing it is used for transmission transmit what it transmits power between the source 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 is a prime mover source prime mover means you know prime means first you know first which rotates is a prime mover it can be electric motor or it can be an uh, ic engine okay prime mover from the source the machine absorbing power okay between these two the power is being transmitted from the source to the machine the counter shafts there are certain shafts which are called counter shafts counter shafts you know because uh, you know the primary shaft rotates in clockwise direction counter shaft will rotate in anti clockwise direction that's why it is called counter shaft the shaft this is a secondary shaft okay and the olden days you know in textile mills and other things they used to use counter shafts then line shafts line shafts means in line you know shafts are there they may be connected with uh, mm, you know uh, couplings and other things and then at a different places different pulleys may be uh, installed if there can be belt pulleys or gears or something like that okay and uh, whichever machine you don't want to use okay the, uh, the, the, the belt of that you should um, you know you, you should transfer to um, loose loose pulley there will be you know fast pulley and loose pulley fast and loose pulleys you may have studied in machine drawing okay With, like that you can disengage that machine okay then overhead shafts overhead shafts means shafts uh, you know which are above in a higher height and from there no with the help of uh, v belts and uh, flat belts uh, we will be taking the power okay to the uh, to the shafts that are down under okay all factory shafts are transmission shafts okay see all factory shafts are transmission shafts okay okay since these shafts carry machine parts such as pulleys gears etc therefore they are subjected to bending also in addition to twisting you see twisting is you know twisting is coming because it has to transmit power bending moment is coming because you know they are you know bearing the pulleys uh, flywheels uh, gears you know flat belt pulley loose belt pulley sprockets of the chains and other things so those things you know those pulleys will have weight 
and also the shaft itself will have its own weight so because of that you know if it is in a horizontal shaft there will be a sagging moment sagging okay so those bending moments will be coming because of those things sometimes no even pull you know uh, the belts are there if the belts are there gears are there you see then also some kind of bending moment because of the tensions belt tensions also comes okay but uh, twisting is coming because it has to transmit power then machine shafts these shafts form an integral part of a machine itself the crank shaft is an example of machine shaft is a crank shaft a spindle and the spindle uh, these are all you know machine shafts okay so crank shaft means you know in ic engines wherever no you have to transmit rotary motion uh, trans uh, uh, reciprocating motion into rotary motion you can use this uh, uh you know a crank and crank shaft and connecting rod okay now coming to the standard sizes sizes of the transmission shafts standard sizes of transmission shafts are you see 25 mm to 60 mm between this 5 mm steps that means 25 will be available 30 will be available 35 available 60 yeah, 35 40 45 50 55 60 like that beyond 60 60 to 110 10 steps of 10 is 60 to 110 steps of 10 beyond 60 beyond 60 60 to 110 110 60 to 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 110 
say shaft subjected to twisting moment only this is the simplest just one formula is there that we used even while we were designing the hand shaft uh, hand lever and uh, foot lever you see uh, that is equal to torque is equal to pi by 16 tau eq that was the formula you see that formula we will use and it will design this is the simplest and uh, shafts subjected to bending moment only shafts which are some some uh, you know this also will have one formula for bending moment that we will see then there are shafts subjected to combined these two combined that is bending moment as well as twisting moment so twisting moment bending moment both are there when two are there see twisting moment induces shear stress bending moment induces uh, sigma b stress sigma stress this is tau stress therefore you have to use principal stresses there you have to find out what is the equivalent twisting moment or equivalent bending moment we have to design okay then there may be shafts subjected to axial loads in addition to combined torsional and bending also you see axial loads means you know um, you see along the axis of the shaft also from axial thrust may be coming a little okay so we shall now discuss the above cases in detail but the thing is you know uh, you will not be asked questions on the basis of this uh, d okay only one two three you know you may be asked okay let us see shafts which are subjected to twisting moment only so you see uh, when the shaft is subjected to torque only twisting moment only then the diameter of the shaft may be obtained by using the torsion equation this is the torsion equation you see initially you remember i told i gave you uh, i mm, i explained to you to about two uh, uh different equations one is torsion equation one is bending equation so this torsion equation the part of the torsion equation is like this t upon j is tau upon r okay t is what is t t is the torque that is coming this will be newton millimeter okay j j is the polar moment of inertia polar moment of inertia is uh, having units mm to the power uh, 4 okay then tau tau is the torsional shear stress this will be having uh, units newton per mm square and r is the uh, radius of the shaft otherwise you can call it as d by 2 also diameter by 2 this will have a unit of millimeter so this is the formula that we will be using if it is subject to only twisting moment so we know for a round shaft the polar moment of inertia j will be pi by 32 due to the power 4 you see this you must have studied in um, you know this your uh, uh, engineering mechanics or uh, strength of materials so you so this formula we use for a circular circular cross section pi by 32 due to the power 4 so uh, the earlier equation this you know for j if we substitute and uh, instead of r we substitute d by 2 you will get uh, this formula see this is how we this formula is derived you know last time i told you that you know we will see the uh, problem how it is derived it is not a big derivation but you know this is how from the torsion equation we have come to this equation this is the most important equation when designing the shafts because most of the shafts will be transmitting torque because they have to transmit power they are transmitting torque and pure torsion is there only this formula we are using t is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube you remember this formula it is an important formula okay so from this equation we can determine the diameter of the round shafts we also know that for hollow shaft, if it, this is a for a you know, round shaft. If it is a hollow shaft, what happens? You see, for hollow, this is for round shaft, you know, solid shaft. Uh, where is a hollow shaft, you know, this j here, d to the power 4 will be replaced by d0 to the power 4 minus di to the power 4. d o to the power 4 minus d i to the power 4. Where d o is the outside diameter and d i is the inside diameter okay and uh, then uh, uh, this r will be taken as r will be taken as do by 2 okay when you substitute that then what happens is our equation this will become this this equation that all important equation is 
t is equal to 5 by 16 tau do to the power 4 minus di to the power 4 upon do. And suppose uh, we call di upon do as k, the ratio of inside diameter to the outside diameter. Then, then what happens is our equation will become like this. T is equal to, uh, finally, you will get pi by 16 tau d0 cube into 1 minus k to the power 4. Okay, just, you know, you observe how this, uh, you know, um, uh, how simplification is done here. Then you will come to this equation. This equation we are going to use for hollow shafts. So, uh, this much you remember. Okay. Then, the hollow shafts are usually used in marine work. Marine work means, you know, in the, in the sea where uh, big, big uh, ships are there. You know, all, uh, it can be big ship or small ship. Uh, these shafts are stronger per kg of material and may be forged on the mandrel. See, they are stronger per kg of the material compared to the solid shafts. See, this sometimes, you know, this is asked as a uh, as an interview question. See, which, which of the shafts, you know, per kg weight will transmit more torque? Solid shaft or hollow shaft? Hollow shaft will transmit more power. Thus, making the material more homogeneous than would be possible for a solid shaft. Okay, so this, you know, forging on a material and making it hollow, this makes the material more homogeneous, it seems. Okay, when a hollow shaft is to be made equal in strength to a solid shaft, the twisting moment of both the shafts must be same. Okay, for the same material of both shafts. So then, you see, this T is equal to, this is for hollow shaft, and this is for solid shaft, then equate it. Then in that case, you will get like this. So finally, you will get, see, d0 cube into 1 minus k to the power 4 should be equal to d cube. So now this equation, twisting moment, how you will find? Torque. You see, if you know the power rating of the motor, you see, uh, Twisting moment may be obtained by using the following relation. This is a very important relation. We know the power transmitted in watts is given by P is equal to 2 pi nt upon 60. This formula you remember. This is another important equation. See, one is, first equation I told you, that is T is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube. That is important. And this is another equation which is important. P is equal to 2 pi nt upon 60. P is power transmitted. Okay, this is in watts is 2 pi n. n is the, the speed of the shaft. So that is in RPM. RPM means what? Revolutions per minute. Per minute, how many rotations it is making. That is RPM. And T is the uh, twisting moment. And uh, upon 60, because this is in meter, see, n is in minutes, no? We can to convert it into seconds. Uh, we divide it by 60. Okay. Some people know they, they will say 2 pi small n t small n is uh, instead of rpm it will be uh, revolutions per second rps okay anyway from this equation you will get this relation for the torque t is equal to p into 60 upon 2 pi n this is another equation that we'll be using to determine what is the twisting moment because you know they will say electric motor has so much capacity so many watts okay like that okay third one is in case of belt drives Belt drives will have, you know, a flat belt or V belt, you know, you will have tensions on both sides. Say there will be two tensions. One is tension uh, tight tire side tension, which is given by uh, T1 and the slack tire side tension is T2 and then radius of that pulley. You see, it's a, it, now we are not talking about the shaft. We are talking about the pulley. Pulley's diameter will be much bigger compared to the shaft. So, on the pulley, the radius of that pulley is capital R or capital D by 2, you can say. So, this uh, uh, twisting moment uh, in terms of the tensions, you see, this is twisting moment. You having unit, Newton millimeter, whereas this is tar, uh, this is tension. This only has Newton because millimeter is here. So, 
tight side tension minus lock slack side tension because belt has two you know one side will be pulling and one side will be giving away so the pulling one will be having tight side tension and the other side will be slack side tension that will be lesser tension so the difference of these two tensions into the radius diameter of the uh, diameter by 2 of the of the pulley that will give you the torque see what is torsion? Torsion is the twisting of an object caused by moment acting about the object's longitudinal axis. This is the longitudinal. Torque is applied like this. You see, step to shaft will be like this. You know, sometimes I asked what is this, how <laughs> identify the object. Okay, anyway, so here, you see, here now, these are the uh, axles, rear axles, which are shafts. You see the shaft can be in the in the in the uh, what is this windmill also shafts can be there okay see torque no is normally like this see when it is twisted applied no this will be twisting like this okay and the, so here what we see is you see if it is twisted you know it can be assumed that you know it is made of uh, various discs and these discs are rotating okay and because of this no a, a twist is uh, inserted okay normally you know we take circular uh, cross section not uh, square cross section so the square cross section will say not asymmetric this is as ac uh, so not axis symmetric this is uh, axis symmetric normally circular cross section only is used suppose it is fixed one on one side and uh, from here to here this we are calling b and this and see when we apply torque on one side what happens is see this is you know is uh, getting an uh, angle this theta is called as angle of twist okay angle of twist we will be using there in the torsion equation so the b has moved from b to b dash so this angle of twist can be given by the formula t into l upon g j where l is the bar's length t is the torque g is the uh, shear modulus and and j is the polar moment of inertia okay so that is the way you can find out the angle of twist okay so, polar moment of inertia describes the cross section's resistance to torsion due to its shape. Okay. See, this is a hollow shaft. See, the radius is R outside, Ri inside. So, then the polar moment of uh, inertia will be a solid shaft. This becomes J. Uh, yeah. So, angle of twist is given by this formula, theta is equal to TL upon G by J. Okay. <coughs> then, you, you can, if you want to find out G, you can, uh, you know, use this formula. So, see, and because of the twisting, what happens? Stresses and strains are induced in the shaft. Okay. And, uh, okay. You see now you see here this is the uh, shaft and uh, you know the torque transmitted uh, will be you know zero at the center and as you go away distant away from the center that uh, the amount of torque uh, transmitted will be increasing okay and uh, so the maximum torque will be transmitted at the periphery okay if it is a hollow one like this only this much of torque now will be reduced okay so therefore that's why we were saying that uh, you know per kg hollow shaft can transmit more uh, torque uh, than the solid shaft okay see shafts may be supported here uh, on these two bearings these are the bearings and in the middle there can be a gear, gear mounted and the other gears also or sprockets can be mounted or pulleys can be mounted okay and uh, everybody thing will be transmitting their own power okay now let us see 
problem. A line shaft rotating at 200 rpm. 200 rpm means this is capital N. Okay, that is the speed of the shaft. Is to transmit 20 kilowatts. 20 kilowatt means 20 into 10 to the power 3 watts. This is the uh, wattage of the motor. The shaft may be assumed to be made up of mild steel with an allowable shear stress of 42 MPa. This is tau. Okay, determine the diameter of the shaft, neglecting the bending moment. Neglecting the bending moment means it is pure torsion only. Okay, so what is the formula we use? First, you know, we use this formula. P is equal to 2 pi nt upon 60. From that, torque can be calculated. Here, we have calculated and this came to uh, 955 Newton meter. This can be converted into Newton millimeter. And then, using this formula, uh, T is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube, we can find out d. Okay. And this D is coming to 48.7. You cannot get the diameter of this. So you have to round it to 50. This is a simple problem. Okay. Thank you.